Back here once again in another video. Be sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe down below. And today we're going to be looking at Sabotage's Edge of Thorns. Released April 2nd, 1993 on Atlantic Records. Its length is 59 minutes, 54 seconds, just shy of an hour. Its genre is heavy, prog, and power metal. Now... 1993 is a very interesting year in music because it's at the height of the flannel fuck era of music, which is one I'm not particularly fond of. There's maybe a couple songs by uh, grunge bands that I kind of liked, but majority of it I didn't. And Sabotage here released their masterpiece, 1993, also seen the release of Meat Loves Bad Outta Hell 2, Get a Grip by Aerosmith, Typo Negatives, Masterpiece, Bloody Kisses. And this album was kind of lodged in there. And I actually never listened to Sabotage up until about a month or two ago. And this was the first album I actually sat down and listened to, mainly due to the album cover. I thought the album cover was really damn good. So I thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And surprisingly, I was blown away by this album. And in a previous video by Chris Oliva's guitar playing is absolutely fantastic on this record. Now, this is also the first album not to feature John Oliva as the lead singer in it. He was replaced by Zachary Stevens, who, reading on Wikipedia, whether this is true or not, I'm not sure, but he handpicked Zach Stevens to replace him. But he's also still on this record. He did do some stuff on it. It also features Chris Oliva, as I said, on guitar, Johnny Lee Middleton on bass, who would go on to play in the Trans-Siberia Orchestra, Steve Doc Wachholz on drums, and like I said, John Oliva on piano, keyboards, and drums on songs two and eight, which is really interesting for a guy that left the band, at least as a singer, is still working with the band. It's something that's just different. Touring, they had somebody else, but it's just, I thought, a very interesting thing. And it was also produced by Paul O'Neill. Now, I'll go through each song a little bit, give a little brief explanation about it. Starts off with the title track, Edge of Thorns. Great piano intro. I really thought that set the mood as how melodic this album was going to be. That built into some really good intro into some chugging riffs. I like Zach's soft vocals at the beginning. It's not, like, overpowering. That's something I'll always say about Sabotage. They knew vocally how to really get their albums across. I love the chorus to this song. But I think what really helps is he's talking about the edge of dawn, dun, 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 by the edge of thorns. But I think what puts it on a whole nother level is when he says, But I don't think about you anymore. Which is something I'd say Pink Floyd did really well, especially on a song like Bike, where he's talking about this bike, and then he said, but I borrowed it. And it was just a great line. Uh, just, yeah, put it on. Nice change into the guitar solo. And uh, the second one, though, felt a lot more sinister. Like, the first one started off very melodic, but the second one had a really more sinister feel to it. The band kicks in. I love Zag's voice, and it ends re-emerging with that piano intro, which I always thought was a great touch by the band. On to song number two, He Carves a Stone. A nice melodic guitar intro. Soft melodic vocals to start. Quickly builds into this James Headfield testament-sounding... Just vocal pattern by Zach. The solo had a great feel to it. And I really feel the song really showed off his range. How it starts off very soft and smooth. But then almost goes into this shrieking banshee with He Carves the Stone. The solo is fantastic and just gets quicker and quicker and quicker. And I wrote on here, the rhythm to this song is amazing. On to song number three, Lights Out. Has a lot more of a faster pace to it to start off. It's not melodic or anything. It's just very fast pace in your face. Great course driving. It's a very driving song. It slows down into a solo that could give Yngwie Malmsteen a run for his money. That's one thing I'll say about Chris Oliva. Fantastic guitar player. Especially on this album, I think this is his shining moment. On to song number four, Scraggy's Tomb, a melodic guitar intro with bass underneath of it. And it has that James Headfield, yeah, yeah, 
type stuff from Zach, which is something that I wasn't really expecting on this album, but you can really tell the Metallica influence a little bit. I love the vocal style, very groovy riffs throughout the song. The guitar fits the vocals perfectly, and at one point of it, it feels like he's talking, but it feels like in space. And the guitar solo, one thing about it, he can play fast, but it has feeling to it, like you actually feel it. On to song number five, Labyrinth, has a piano guitar sort of thing to it. It feels more like a filler or a prelude to another song. The guitar soars and the tone should just be illegal. It's so good, it should just be illegal to have a tone that good. Probably the closest tone-wise to David Gilmore that I've ever found, just for giving me that feeling of just either sadness, hope, whatever, but just great tone. On to song number six, Follow Me, a melodic intro, guitar part, soft vocals, gains intensity throughout, mini solo, great vocal range, love the melodic interlude into the solo, has a chord riff, guitar playing is outstanding, and I love the soft, gentle vocal at the end where it just feels like he's just speaking. It's really damn good. On to song number seven, Exit Music. It's a just a piano song, flat out, nothing more, nothing less. But John Oliva really shines on that. That is a really well-written song. I feel like those three songs actually are meant to be together. It could pretty much be one song, but it works really, really well. On to song number eight, Degrees of Sanity, a melodic guitar intro followed by a heavy chugging riff. The vocals have a sinister feel to it, I find. A melodic interlude has kind of that conjuring feel to it, to the intro to the mega song, The Conjuring. And leading into a solo that also has a very Megadeth feel to it, but it works really, really damn well to it. On to song number nine, Conversation Piece. It's a faster and more upbeat song. I like the riff, love the catchy chorus, and it has a nice groove into the solo. And it's a song that, you know what, I just stuck on and to think about just being a conversation piece, like a piece of art. But then just throwing in something about a teacup and stuff, it's like, that's actually a really damn good song. Quite enjoyed it. On to song number 10, All That I Bleed, piano intro soul feel to it. Love when the band kicks in. It kind of, the vocals pop with the band. It just puts it into a whole nother gear. Guitar solo, like I said, so melodic. It should be illegal. And a piano outro. But man, this is one of the best power ballads. This is a great ballady song. I love it. On to song number 11, Damien. It's a lot heavier, probably one of the more heavier songs on the album. Uh, intro, headfield like vocals. Piano middle underneath the vocals was a great touch. It's just a great song. And of course, just the repeating of Damien or whatever, just really damn good. On to song number 12, Mild, Miles Away. Just a great melodic guitar intro, soft vocals, more of a Uriah Heep rock riff 80s feel to it. To anyone who knows Uriah Heep through the 80s and those rocking riffs that they used to do, it kind of has that feel to it for me. I love the drum blast throughout. has a soaring solo, just that soars so good, and it sounds amazing. That really, truthfully, it should be illegal. It's a really damn good song. On to song number 13, Sleep. It's an acoustic song on the album, has a ballad feel to it, picks up speed near the end, and it's a great way to end the album with this record. Now that is Edge of Thorns, fantastic record to listen to, just, I can't get over how damn good this thing is. A best song off of it, I picked Edge of Thorns, Labyrinths Follow Me, Exit Music, that type of stuff. Hidden Gem Sleep, He Carves the Stone, or the rest of the damn album. This, to me, is a masterpiece of music. This is an album I put on not expecting really much out of it or to like anything out of it. It's beautiful. Highly, highly recommended if I had to give it a grade out of five. Five out of five. This is an album that I think anyone nowadays should go back listen to. And you could find stuff in here that you could do now and it would be fantastic. But anyway, that's my thoughts and opinions on this album. The artwork to it is absolutely beautiful. It was Chris Oliva's girlfriend, I believe. 
who was in the cover, and then he had what was said to be John Oliva's face in the background, sort of being like good and evil and that type of thing, but it was fantastic. This is a band I actually might go back and review their entire discography. But anyway, this is me here once again, signing out. Peace. Tell me, what did you guys think of this album? What's your favorite songs from it? Be sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Peace.